It's seven past ten. It's time for your stories. Here's where I, uh, we talk about maybe a listener or someone I've run into who might have an interesting story, and we like to tell this story here on a Tuesday night after 10 o'clock news. Now, let me just uh, give you the picture here. Waiting to catch a plane to go to the Gold Coast a few weeks back, and I thought, oh, I'm going to get a book to read. I don't want to read it on a tablet. I want to have an actual book to read while I'm on the plane. I wander into the, uh, the bookshop, news agency place, and I spot a book called, I think it's called 30 Before 30, um, by Eddie Deline. We'll get to the actual exact title shortly. Here is a fella who grew up in Housing Commission, um, started to invest at the age of 19. By the age of 30, owned 30 properties. 30 properties. Started working in a fast food outlet as a teenager, worked his way to a remarkable level of wealth in a tight housing market. Eddie Deline, welcome to 3AW. Thanks so much, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Uh, I just loved the book, and I read it. Um, I read it from start to finish, and I read it fairly quickly. And I'm going to read it again. Um, for for those not familiar with your story, um, I know there's a lot of hard work has gone into this. So let's not just pre- let's not just present this as some sort of okay. Here's your here's your silver bullet to great wealth. You did a lot of work, and you worked extremely hard. But uh, how did you? Where did you start? Yeah, definitely. So I guess I um like I started, I, I got interested in property when I was a teenager, and that was the fact that uh, you said a little bit already. Um, no one in my family actually owned a property beforehand, so growing up in a very like kind of humble beginnings, it was very rough growing up in the neighbourhood and housing commission, etc. So just growing up in that kind of atmosphere, I wanted a place when I you know when I became an adult that. That, that we actually own, that we you know could do something to, and wanted that security. So that's where the real passion began. Um, I started, as you mentioned, I worked at McDonald's uh, as my first job, and I got in with a small deposit. So nowadays people say you have to get in with a you know minimum twenty percent deposit. I got in with like a a ten percent at the time, and I just started by uh, getting that first investment property, which was about an hour away from where I live. So it wasn't necessarily where I lived, but it was just trying to get my foot in the door. So I bought a property that was about 140000 roughly, 138000 So 10% deposit, I really only put down, you know, 13, 14K, roughly. That was the first okay, one. Okay, so, so you weren't aiming to sort of buy um, a palace in Versailles at this point. You've just, you've just gone out, you've studied the market, and you've found something that, that looks like it will, it will be rentable, by someone else, and it's 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 something that uh, you've you've probably bought. Uh, can I can I suggest maybe at a little bit under market value? Definitely. So the three keys is buying property that it's got to be under market value. So it's got to be like an urgent sale, distress sale, a property that's maybe kind of maybe has a tenant already, so it's kind of hard to sell to an owner occupier. Um, but yeah, it's got to be under market value. It has to have a really good rental return, but also upside for for capital growth as well. So, um, yeah, and it was a two-bedroom unit. So most people think about buying, you know, a house with a backyard and having a big block of land. Like, of course I wanted that. But that's when I was uh, working my first job, I was working at McDonald's. So I couldn't afford a house, so I compromised, started with a two-bedroom unit, and, you know, that unit led to then a house and, you know, a lot more property after that. So, so, so you've got into the market in a, in a, one of the cheapest properties around, but you've got into it under market value and with a deposit, so that o- automatically gives you some some uh, uh, capital within that property. How much did that help you? Yeah, significantly. So, like, I bought the property for about one hundred, you know, thirty eight hundred forty k, roughly. Um, and uh, for that particular one, I believe it's probably under market value, but about. 40k roughly so on the way into it oh, made right. about 40,000 um that later on was able to use a bit of equity out of that property to buy other ones but also I continued to save so I just always lived very frugal like I wasn't going out and buying brand new flashy cars like a lot of other you know, of my friends were at the time when we were you know teenagers I wasn't buying designer clothes I was just trying to live frugal and 
uh, put as much you know money away as I could because I realized as time goes on, you get, get more commitments. Now I've got a family and kids and et cetera. So I, I realized realistically that was coming later on. So I did what I could when I was younger. Okay, so to, 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 let, just give us a give us the picture here. You were nineteen. Is that am I remembering this remembering this right from the book? Yes, yeah, so I was like just at, before I turned nineteen, so eighteen, nineteen, roughly. Yeah, eighteen, nineteen, and then how long before you got the second property? Well, the second one I was actually about twenty one years old, roughly. So about two years went by, and that was probably one of my biggest regrets that I let two years get away from me <laughs> before buying another one. Um, which wasn't a long time, but the next property I bought was in Adelaide. And I, I grew up in Sydney, live in Sydney, but I, my dad used to live in Adelaide. And I knew that market was also really affordable as well. So I bought the second property there, and that was a really affordable one too. I picked up about it. This is going back like a decade ago, but picked it up about 130000 at the time. So, so the old the old adage adage about um, always buy a property you can drive by every day is ridiculous. Correct. It, it, I do not agree with it. It's a very, you know, old school mentality, and it doesn't work. Especially like, let's say, as an example, someone's starting off and they live in you know a suburb where houses are four million dollars. Hypothetically, like if a person's you know nineteen twenty years old right now and they work at McDonald's like I did. You're not going to be able to afford that house for four million dollars right away, but you know if you, if you invest in other areas where there's you know it's a little bit more affordable, like you can pick up properties still today um, around Brisbane, Adelaide, Gold Coast, things like that for as little as three hundred thousand. It might be a townhouse or a unit, but it's something to get started with. Uh, when you when you buy townhouses or units, do you have to be careful of um, the, the way this the the complex is set up? Oh, look, yeah, sometimes you do. Like I bought. In my own portfolio now, I've, I've probably owned about 20 different townhouses and units and along with a bunch of standalone houses. But um, if it's in a big complex, you've obviously got different body corporate or strata fees, of course. Um, it just depends on what's in the complex. If it's a townhouse complex with a pool, with a gym, with a uh, tennis court, then obviously it adds to those kind of fees. But a lot of people don't realize that if you do buy, let's say, a townhouse to get started with or a unit like I did, the body corporate or strata actually includes your building insurance in it. So you don't need to pay for that separately. That's covered already in that. One of the great things about the book, Eddie, which and there are many of them that I, that even at my uh, uh, um, advancing years, I had I didn't have a full understanding of, um, but you really explain things. So, so for a young person who reads this book, um, you, you really go through all the details and the breakdown of costs to do what you've done. Yeah, definitely. I think it's really important. Like, um, as an example, even in today's market, like there's different banks and lenders that will do as little as a five percent deposit. So if I was starting again from scratch, let's say I'm, you know, not eighteen, nineteen years old, and I'm, you know, at working at Macca's, you can still get in. Like, if I was buying my first property today, you can get in with a five percent deposit at, at the least. Um, obviously, you pay LMI, but if, a, if you could pick up a property for about three hundred thousand in parts of Brisbane and Adelaide and the Gold Coast and things like that, which are in metro regions, and they're growing and they're oh, very fast. So 5% of 300000 is $15,000. So, like, that's achievable for anyone to say if, if they, you know, put their mind to it. Uh, the, the, the thing that came through in the book was, um, yes, you do look for the right properties at the right prices, but you did a power of work. You didn't just, you didn't just sort of um, willy-nilly go, oh, yeah, that'll be a good one. You actually did a lot of work. And like everything in life, uh, a lot of work usually ends up with um, some reward. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think it's it's also, you know, thinking outside the box as well because I realised as I was, you know, working different jobs, like sometimes I work two or three jobs at once um, just to try to save that extra money. Like you can work as hard as you can, but if you don't kind of think outside the box, and try to do things a little bit differently. And that's where I realized that if I could buy a few investment properties, you know, have the rental income coming in and they go up over time and I use leverage to my advantage, like that's a lot better than, you know, just buying one property, paying it off and then that's it. But if you can buy one, then why not buy 10 or 20 or more? Eddie, there could be people listening tonight who have got um, money sitting in term deposits that, has just been sitting there and earning them absolutely nothing or going backwards for the past few years. Is your book only for young people who need some inspiration and some advice? No, not at all. So, like, it's like I, I've, I've worked with people, I've, you know, pointed people in the right direction. 
you know, whether they're young people or, you know, older people as an example, but you can get started. Like I've, um, you know, work with people and help people and they've been in their, you know, 50s and 60s, et cetera, as well. So you can buy properties through a self-managed super fund. I've bought about five or going on six properties through SMSF as well. So that's very common for people as well that may, you know, they might not have savings or they might have equity or whatever it is, but you can use, you know, uh, you can buy property using your superannuation in today uh, as well. And you can get started again with as little as about 70K in, in in superannuation to use that as a deposit for an investment property. Uh, it is great to have you on the program. I'm glad I wandered into that bookshop at uh, at the airport because uh, I was inspired by your story. Um, EddieDeline.com or is it EddieDeline.com.au? Uh, Eddie, yeah, dot .com.au, Eddie Deline. <laughs> That's D-I-L-L-E-N, eddiedeline.com.au. Um, the book I read was 30 Properties Before 30, uh, How You Can Start Investing in Property uh, Right Now. Uh, Eddie, great to have you on the program, and you are these days advising other people. You've, you've sort of gone to that next level. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, but, that, you know, help people on a day-to-day basis now. Like, there's people have always, you know, followed my story over the years, and, you know, people started asking for help, and uh, property is my life, so I can literally talk about it. All night long. Good on you. Eddie, great to have you on the program. Thanks for giving us some time tonight. Thanks so much, Dennis. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. It's 18 past 10. I'd love to hear from you. What age were you when you bought your first home? Do you recall what it cost? One double three six nine three. When did you buy your first home? How old were you? And do you recall what it cost one double three six nine three love to hear your stories um i just found that book really inspirational um uh, uh he's he, he's just worked so hard and um and been very successful so uh, i say good luck to him 18 past 10 and it just goes to show i mean we keep hearing these days that it's just not so many more people are finding it so much harder to get into the market but um he he had a lot of sacrifice but he's now as he mentioned married with uh, kids and uh, life is pretty damn good and he's still extremely young one double three six nine three your calls when did you buy your first home and do you recall what it cost